Oh, got something. He's a big one too. Okay, don't jump. Oh, okay. We may have a two pounder on here or bigger. He just jumped out, you guys. Wow, this is gonna be the biggest fish I've caught in weeks. Don't jump. Oh, he just jumped again. I didn't catch this, Carrie caught this. It's our biggest one, 6.3 pounds. You ready to put them away? Mail call time, it's mail call time. It's lots of fun with mail call time. So if you guys have been watching the channel, you know at the beginning or I don't know, about two months ago, I started fishing with Ark Olympus crankbaits and we were crushing it to the fact where I bought um, another arc which turned out to be an LP 58 and 7 LP 38 but I was still cleaning up on it and so then I bought an LP 38 to replace it but about two weeks ago on a TikTok live I was out fishing with it and I got a mid-air um, bird's nest on my braid the line snapped and the thing went flying it broke my heart so I quickly went on eBay and I got these guys. I bought a new LP58 to replace the one that I sent flying into Davy Jones locker. And then I got another LP58 that is a natural bass color. So now we have two LP38s that Carrie and I fish with and two new LP58s. And uh, I'm excited to see what this one does because I have a Guggen Squad lipless crankbait that's similar color to this. And that is the one that I caught two bass on with one shot. I got one. Got one. Got one on the crankbait. I don't know what he is. I have a feeling he's a tilapia. Oh, two for one. I got two bass on one. one. Carrie. Look. It's a two for one special. Carrie, I got two on one. <laughs> okay, hold on. You guys. Okay, I'm gonna get the small guy off first. I'm gonna have to use my lip lock to do this. <laughs> okay, I need some loving for this. I just got two bass on one crankbait. I clearly swam through a school. There's one. And Carrie got a fish too. There's two. Now clearly it has nothing to do with skill. I just happened to swim that bait through a, a uh, school of fish and a hit on it. But um, I am a fan of these team arc. I'm also a fan of the fact that this team arc is actually located in Port St. Lucie, um, Florida. So they are kind of local to me. And I've since found out that they make fishing poles, rods. I'm, I was informed last night poles are for tents, fishing rods. So if I end up getting a secondary pole rod to replace my other... Um, To replace my other spinning rod, I'm going to probably go with a Team Arc. But yeah, so uh, hopefully we can go out and go fishing here soon. You guys watch the video I posted, uh, the best of 2021. I caught my first fish on a Guggen topwater buzzbait right here in this spot.
Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's mine. I don't know if you dropped it somewhere. A couple weeks ago? Yeah, well, I just found it over by my car. I kind of parked a little bit further away from Yeah, I lost one a couple weeks ago. Thank you. About 18 bucks a piece. Oh, good. Hi, bud. Hi. Hi. He's like, okay, I'll watch. All right. Hi. You got to say hello. Hi. You look like my Boston Terrier, but bigger. Yeah. He had a lady once say, well, that's a big Boston Terrier. <laughs> now he's a small boxer. <laughs> Hi. Too bad I ain't got no fishies for you to play with. Okay. Have a go. Thank you. Skateboarded for, I don't know, 15 years. Snowboarded for 13. And then I moved to California and just started surfing. And got word I was moving to Florida. Oh, got something. He's a big one too. Okay, don't jump. Oh, okay. We may have a two pounder on here or bigger. He just jumped out, you guys. Wow, this is gonna be the biggest fish I've caught in weeks. Don't jump. Oh, he just jumped again. Okay, I gotta get him in. I don't wanna lose him. You guys, thank you for sticking around. Okay, we're running, we're running. Oh yeah, we got some nice fish on here, you guys. Wait, holy shit. <laughs> now big fish usually don't fight like this he's probably a three pounder no 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 stop 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 oh yeah look at this monster guys hold on let me get him off the hook and turn the uh turn the camera around so you guys can see him but we got some monster here this is definitely the biggest fish i've caught in months i'm excited you guys are along for the ride Oh yeah, he's got to be three pounds, maybe two and a half. <clears throat> oh yeah, he's a fat bob. Hold on, you guys. I don't want you to think I'm lying. Yeah. Look at this fat bob. Look at this guy. Put in your guess. I'm gonna say three pounds. He was jumping like an Olympic swimmer. Two point nine seven. But to be honest with you, this lip lock weighs 0.27. So he's two and three quarter pounds. Look at that, this is the nicest fish I have caught in a while. Look at this bad boy. Thank you guys for hanging out with me waiting. The biggest fish I've caught in months. Now I know if you're in Texas and all that, you're like, oh, that's not a big fish. But wintertime Florida, this is a fat hog right here. Okay, nice. Thank you, fella. You made it worth coming out here tonight. That was fantastic. That is what I love about fishing. Okay, guys, I got one. He's going to be a little one. Oh, he jumped too. <laughs> These guys are lively today. Here's a dink. He jumped as high as that damn two-pounder did. Oh, he kind of swallowed the hook, so I got to probably cut my line and get this hook out. Hold still. <sighs> this guy's small but second fish for the day. Okay, I was watching a TikToker who fishes and uh, they say whenever they get a fish that swallows a hook, they end up cutting it out and letting it rot. Let me show you guys how to get out a swallowed hook. So as you see, I just cut my line, right? I'm gonna pull the worm out off the hook. It's the best way to get a swallowed hook out. So remove your worm. And so the hook is deep down there in his mouth. What you want to do, because you cut your line, just go down there and grab the barb end. Sometimes it's easier to go through the gill plate. And just grab the barb end. And since you cut your line, you can bring the hook out backwards. And what I mean by backwards is you're going to pull the hook through like that so that the knot side comes out. And you're not leaving your hook in the worm and you ain't gonna kill it so now i pulled the hook out the hook's free the fish doesn't die see a lot of people when they first start fishing because what happens is the hook gets in a loop like that right and people pull and pull and it snags and pulls the inside of the fish out so just cut your line reach down there and grab the barb end 
and pull it out this direction. So instead of just think of it like this. Um, you ever heard of stories like if you ever get shot with a bow and arrow, you don't want to yank the arrow out because it's going to fuck you up. You want to either break the arrow in half and then pull it out or push it through. Same thing with a swallowed hook. Don't sit there and pull the hook out. You're going to kill the fish. Cut your line, pull the hook out the other direction, retie on the line. You don't lose a hook, especially when the hook's a dollar a piece if you're using these high performance hooks. But more importantly, you're not leaving a fish swimming around with a hook inside, which will probably result in them dying. Thanks for the follow. That's the most consistent. Okay, I got another fish. He's a little one, but I'll take him. Number four for the night. Look at look at this little guy. <clears throat> Number four, little dink. So we caught three dinks and a big mama. Go out fishing until okay, all the bats are coming out of Bat Bridge. They're all just dropping down. I'm so glad I didn't go into there yet. See all the bats coming? You guys probably can't see them. All the bats are coming out of Bat Bridge. Seven feet here. I bought these Zoom Ultra Worms. <laughs> Things are huge. I've actually caught and fished with these guys too. Yeah. Oh, biggest. <laughs> I found them at Dick's. They're, they're the exact same Zoom, but they're, they call them the Ultra Worms. It's not a Magnum? No, it's the Zoom Ultra Worm. It's for the gluttonous fish. <laughs> I have found that Zoom are more buoyant. I mean, they're more dense, so you can... I find like if I switch from a Zoom to a culprit, I gotta completely change my setup because culprits are so light. I like how heavy Zooms are because you can cast them further. Gun range is open. <laughs> so we are out at Cecil B. Webb Wildlife Preserve. It's my first time fishing here. In the background you hear some gunshots. I used to come here all the time to go to the gun range. It's a weird little lake. It's only two feet right here. But like Mike and I were talking about. A lot of times when you're catching fish off the bank, you pull them out two feet of water anyhow. It is eight feet on the other side. But we're just kind of fishing, waiting for Ron to get here. Don't want to go too far from the boat ramp. I think I got one. No, oh, I got one. <laughs> I thought I was just snagged. Oh, he let go, whatever it was. Probably should put a smaller worm on. I was just kind of letting him sit there while I readjusted my boat when I started reeling, I had one on. We're on. I'm gonna tie a little knot on here just so it don't come out. There you go, you're good to go. Should have had to give me a beer after all that. Oh, do you have any? No. Ooh, I'll wait. Oh, shit. Are you used to that fish finder yet? Yeah. There's a learning curve on them. It is. I got mine set to goldfish mode. So anything that marks it just shows up like a goldfish I don't cracker. Know how to do that with this. It just beeps at me when it's like fish. So you have to look at the 
kind of gauge what those arcs are. Sad thing is though, it, it'll since I have mine in goldfish mode, like if I get a bunch of lily pads, it'll act like a bunch of fish. We're gonna go to a deeper spot. Just a good ship plus. Alright, I'm up. <laughs> okay, how does this thing work? Oh, okay. Shit, you gotta pass this whole thing through there? Oh, yeah, well, I'll just tie it like this. You shouldn't go anywhere. That yeah, should be long enough. Okay, we're good to go. Choo choo! <laughs> this is ridiculous. I ain't complaining. Piece of shit out of paddling. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We're engine smoking. Cut my <laughs> loose. You cut him loose. I feel like I'm in a Waco glider. Uh, Waco glider. Ooh, I got bacon. I said, I got bacon. <laughs> Finally caught a fish. I'm on the board! <laughs> they flying to Port Charlotte Airport? That's gotta be Port Charlotte Airport. A place the first time I ever went there, I felt like I was on an episode of Bob Newhart. The lady uh, checked me in. It's the same lady did TSA. Is also the same lady worked in the gift shop. <laughs> uh, oxygen, that's all. Don't be mad that I've caught two fish. I caught him right on the drop. <laughs> Apparently not, I'm the one catching fish. I'd be providing the food if we were eating them. So what you're saying is that you're, you're essential on the survival. Yep. Okay. What do you think, Mike? I think so. We haven't caught shit since Okeechobee. <laughs> or even before that, actually. We can look at Okeechobee. You can go faster now, I was just... I hit him and he started dragging. I was like, do I have a fish? And he starts spinning in circles. <laughs> He's barrel rolling. So you're the guy. You're the guy that K-Rock plays Led Zeppelin for. <laughs> I'm like, who the f*** is going to listen to goddamn Dio? And ACDC all the time. Now I know, you're the guy. Yeah, we were fishing over here earlier. We we're waiting on you. Yeah, hook up back on me. Huh? Hook up on me and then we'll move some more and then, uh. Chopping broccoli. Eh? Well, 
well, fella. Have a good one. Yeah, take it easy. Take it easy I'll send you fella. pictures of the five pounder I catch later. I hope so. Here's this. I got enough shit on my boat. Yep, take care. See you, Jeff. Be easy, drive safe. Drive fast, take chances. Don't do anything I want to do, which is a lot. Huh? So don't do anything what I want to do, which is a lot. Short list. Yeah. I'll see you next weekend. Take it easy. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> Two, 2.4, 2.23. Uh-oh, I almost said three mile an hour. 264, 270, 280. Be a good place for alligators too. Not that I'm looking for good places for alligators. Okay, we're looking at two feet right here. Nice thing about this lake is there's plenty of places for me to pull over to use the restroom. What's going on? Got one. Number three for the day. He's gonna be a little one, but I don't care. I'll take it. Get out of the grass. Get out of the grass. Number three. Oh, you see a gator down there? How far down is it? Huh. See out in the middle? Let's come out and look. It's a gator out here. Let's see if I can see him. Hold on, Ike. I'm in this bend. Good. Oh, I see him. Yeah, there's a head sticking up out of the grass over there, and you can just see, just see his head, but he's facing upward. Talking about off the lily pads? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, before that, when you get to where we're at, uh, around, see where the weeds stick out a little bit yep. right there? He's on the back end of those weeds, so if you go nose out past his weeds, you'll see it. Oh, yeah. Got, got a long snout on him. Yeah, he just went underwater. Go. Got a long snout on him. Yeah, he just went underwater. You yeah, guys were asking about alligators. They're here. He just went underwater. He just went underwater. You ain't gonna see him. Yeah. As soon as I came around the corner, he, he put his head under. This has been a Digital 410 production. <laughs>